Good afternoon, everyone, and most warmly welcome to this press conference of the Nordic countries. Uh, first, Prime Ministers will give their brief remarks, and then we will take some questions. So, Prime Minister Sipila, please. First of all, uh, thank you for all of you for coming uh, to Helsinki. I would like to thank my, my colleagues also for your warm compliments of our 100 years of independence. I will give now the floor to Erna Sulberg. Uh, this year, Norway is the president of the uh, Council of Ministers. Nordic. Thank you, and uh, once again, congratulations on your 100 years. We have signed a, a new document uh, congratulating you also in a small ceremony earlier before the meeting started. Um, this meeting today, I think, has reaffirmed our commitment to the strong cooperation that exists between our countries. Uh, I think uh, closer global cooperation is an answer uh, and a natural response in, uh, in an increasingly unpredictable global situation where we have to find common solutions and common approaches uh, to some of the challenges that we see, but also that we can um, talk about the issues so that we also can become a stronger block in different international organizations on, on reaffirming the different, uh, um, uh, different uh, views that I think the Norwegian countries have often a familiar stand on. We will work together to continue the development of uh, the Nordic region and ensure that it remains the most integrated region in the world. So we have discussed the Nordic cooperation, but we have maybe even used the most of our time to discuss broader range of issues, including the upcoming summit for fair jobs and growth that is going to be in Gothenburg uh, next month, the work on anti-radicalization and challenges in a global security situation, and um, it's important to say that the global context uh, calls for stronger cooperation at the Nordic level as well as in the European and transatlantic level. Um, the European economy is slowly recovering, although uh, challenges still remain. But what we see, for example, we're in uh, some of the Nordic countries is that there is a good economic growth and a good development these days. And, um, we are managing to finance our highly developed welfare systems, and we do have to continue with this. We have discussed uh, the issues that are in front of us on digitalization, the issues that uh, uh, are the global large issues of the world, the security, uh, North Korea. Uh, and um, I think we are seeing eye to eye on a lot of these international issues and, and, and finding uh, common approaches to, to how to deal with it. And uh, we are leaving the floor for now for the Swedish uh, government and the Swedish Prime Minister to be the president of, uh, of this uh, Nordic cooperation. But for those who believe that the Nordic cooperation is less important because of EU and other international institutions, I think it becomes more important these days when there is insecurity and that we can find common approaches even though we have different associations both to EU, NATO and other large, uh, large organizations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first, uh, thank you, Finland, for uh, splendid uh, arrangements uh, during this meeting. And uh, thank you, Jua, for being a good host. I'm very pleased to be here with my Nordic colleagues because, as uh, Anna Solberg just told, uh, said, uh, this is a very important cooperation. It's important for Sweden, really uh, important, and goes uh, hand in hand also with other kind of cooperations that we have, but the Nordic cooperation is very special, and it means a lot to, to the people in, in our countries. And, and Sweden is very glad now to, to be handed over this, uh, this presidency from Norway, and we will do our best to, to continue this, this work. We have uh, obvious, obviously discussed uh, a lot of topics that are uh, of great concern to all of us. And on EU matters, I have informed about the, the preparations that we are right now undertaking in Sweden for the social summit in Gothenburg, November 17th, which will give uh, not only us as political leaders in Europe, but also uh, employers, trade unions, civil organizations, and other important actors uh, a splendid um, opportunity to discuss how we want to develop the labor market uh, in Europe. 
in such a way that people feel secure for the uh, more secure for for the future and can that we underline the importance of the social dimension in Europe. Uh, this is not only about the market. This is not only about financing finances and, and goods and services, which is important in itself. But this is mainly about developing something that is good for the people. We have also discussed relations with China. And of course, Sweden, uh, as all of us, uh, we are uh, interested in developing bilateral uh, contacts with China, relations with China. But also, we can also see the necessity of finding other ways uh, in combination that our countries can uh, combined also have contact with China. The actions of North Korea uh, are, are of great concern, and we, we underline the need to, to firm actions by the international community, uh, implementing the sanctions now uh, decided uh, in the Security Council uh, on North Korea, and at the same time see what ways can we find uh, to, to have a better dialogue, and how can we reach out uh, to make sure that we decrease uh, tensions instead of increasing tensions. We have uh, also um, uh, had a fruitful discussion about uh, extremism and how to combat radicalization. Uh, we have had uh, uh, terrorist attacks in our region as well, and we believe that we can cooperate even more efficient to prevent such uh, attacks, and of course, for governments, it's fundamental to protect uh, our citizens, so we'll do more together to find methods to prevent these kind of attacks. Lastly, I want to mention that we also addressed um, the Me Too movement. Not only we, we acknowledged and we said we need to, to do more uh, as governments and also in the Nordic region, we have a fundamental human perspective uh, in the fact that uh, half of the population uh, more or less during a lifetime experienced different kind of uh, sexual harassment, uh, which we cannot accept at all. Uh, this is something that we uh, need to address uh, much more clear. Clearly, we, we knew that these things happened and we knew it was broad, but the scale of this when we hear about it is, is uh, absolutely uh, unacceptable, uh, all violations is, is unacceptable. This is something that we need to address as societies. And uh, Nordic countries, I think, should be at the very forefront of this uh, and, and taking lead in making sure that our society develops in such a way that both men and women can feel secure and, and that we respect the human integrity uh, no matter, it doesn't matter if you're a man or, or a woman, we all have the same value. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, I would also like to, to thank uh, Juha for hosting us here today. It's always, always a pleasure to be uh, among Nordic colleagues uh, because we share a very special relation. Um, and as you just have heard from my colleagues from Norway and Sweden, we have discussed a number of, of different issues. Uh, and I want to highlight that in the light of the cowardly attack in New York yesterday and the recent terror attacks in Europe, we discussed radicalization um, and terrorism because this is a phenomenon we all have suffered from in, in different ways. And, and effort to counter and prevent extremism and radicalization must remain a high priority. It is of utmost importance that the Nordic countries continue to join forces our, in our prevention efforts. And next spring, we will host in, in Denmark uh, a ministerial meeting um, in, in this uh, very specific field of how we can cooperate even closer in uh, counter uh, radicalization. I guess it's right to say that the Nordic countries are currently experiencing the most challenging security situation since the end of the Cold War. It calls for united efforts and cooperation, and we had a good discussion about our approach to this, and I think we will continue this discussion when we meet with our Baltic friends later today. And finally, we talked about the Nordic region in transition. The Nordic countries are in the forefront in the green transition, and and many countries look to us for, for inspiration. Um, 
I think especially the common Nordic uh, energy market in terms of electricity uh, is a proven example of uh, the added value linked to the Nordic cooperation. And it serves as an example when we all go to Paris uh, later this uh, year to push this uh, climate agenda uh, forward. Um, we are indeed a leading example in, in, in this uh, field. So I think we have had a very fruitful discussion this morning and I'm looking forward to the meeting with our policy colleagues later today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I would also like to thank uh, Finland for hosting this event. As you, some of you might know, I'm, I'm a substitute for my Prime Minister, Bjarne Benediktsson. He has other things to work on these days. <laughs> this is uh, the first time I, I attend such a meeting, and indeed we have had a very good meeting uh, this morning, and uh, we have been addressing a wide range of issues. And as you know, we are all eager to tell what we are doing. So they have said at all what we have been doing this morning. But uh, in that part of the discussion I introduced, I can say that we have we fully agreed that uh, addressing climate change is one of the biggest challenges of our time. And we must look for ways to remain at the forefront in addressing climate change with our, in our region and uh, worldwide. That's all uh, what I have to add, what you have uh, said before me. Okay, thank you okay. very much, Prime Ministers. And I know I, now we have... Yeah. Oh, I, sorry, I, I, you wanted I, I, to say I, I, something on the matter. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, I agree that we had a, an excellent meeting with my colleagues, as always. Uh, I also think that, that the Nordic cooperation is nowadays even more important uh, than before. Uh, we should remember that the Nordic countries are creating very special uh, common welfare area. We should continue this development in different sectors. One of the most important topics uh, uh, during these days uh, in our discussions uh, has been digitalization. I am uh, very satisfied that we have this topic so strongly in our agenda. We have now take some step forward among uh, EU in this area, so it's important that uh, also Nordic countries are innovative and uh, kind of forerunner in this field. Nordic countries are one of, one of the most integrated area in the world. Uh, in this digitalization plays an important role. I think also uh, in that sense we can be a pilot area for European Union also. We continue our discussion concerning digitalization also in our afternoon's meeting. I hope that we could make some concrete plans for the future work. Another very important topic uh, we have discussed here is how to make uh, our borders more open. Even if we are forerunners in this uh, uh, area, uh, we still have some work to do. We need to continue our work uh, and cooperation. Our work in this area must be uh, clearly seen in everyday life in our, of our citizens. Goodwill and Nordic solidarity is needed when we are solving these problems. Uh, Stefan uh, mentioned uh, uh, the Me Too issue. I fully support this. We should have uh, zero tolerance for these kind of issues in, in the Nordic countries, in Scandinavia. Uh, today we also discussed a lot about the global security situation. We are sh sharing our concerns, what comes uh, to the situation in North Korea, Iran, Syria, and Ukraine. Here are very shortly my, my points. Uh, I ho hope that we can continue uh, in the afternoon when our Baltic uh, colleagues will join us. 
Okay, and now it's time to say <laughs> thank you for all the Prime Ministers and go into the questions. And I kindly, kindly ask you to concentrate on matters that we all are interested in. In other words, on today's agenda and not go into the national issues. And we start with TV2 Norway. Mr. Lecker Rasmussen pointed out the security situation uh, that's extremely extra challenging these days for the Nordic countries as well. In the survey, uh, the Nordic survey that was presented yesterday, the peoples of the Nordic countries answered that security, foreign policy, defense policies are the most important issue to d discuss in among the Nord Nordic countries. And mm -hmm. I would like to ask the Prime Minister, what are your response to this on the ground? For instance, is there a wish or plans of a more an increased level of joint military exercises in, for instance, northern part of Norway, Sweden and Finland? Well, uh, if I can start by answering, it's, um, there are a will to more um, work on joint um, training. Uh, we do have an extensive work of, of uh, military exercise, especially between Norway and, and Sweden. In, uh, uh, we are usually fighting a war every second year as a training session. I'm not going to say who won the last one, but it's, um, uh, but also with other partners, the uh, NATO partners coming and all to, to make sure that people are trained for winter wartime. But I mean, we do one of the big aspects of more uh, Nordic uh, military cooperation is to use the potential of, uh, of training better and, and make more exercises and more training sessions and, uh, and know each other better also as partners is in fact to, to do this together. So um, we have not gone so far into the north, but uh, the Trendlag region is an area where we have uh, done warfare with the Swedes for I think at least a thousand years. Mm -hmm. Now we are doing it peacefully to train each other. <laughs> Does anyone else want to comment on this area? Yeah, I, I think that we, we already do that uh, in, in, in many levels. In, in Nordic level, uh, Finland and Sweden, we are uh, training together. And also uh, Finland and Sweden, we are uh, joining the NATO uh, exercises in, in some cases in, in this area. So this is already happening. Yeah, I just want to add very shortly that uh, some of us are NATO members and, and others are not. But uh, those of us who are members of NATO always keep this Nordic aspect in mind when we uh, work uh, within uh, NATO. Uh, and, uh, and that's why we have this NATO open door policy towards uh, Sweden and, 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 and Finland. So I think this uh, perspective is, a, is very important indeed, yes. Sweden, we just had the Aurora exercise, uh, the biggest we've had for, for many years, uh, with uh, also our Nordic friends, but also France, United States. Mm -hmm. So, of course, as we are now increasing our military capacity, our uh, expenditure as well, uh, both in, in human resources, but also new materials, we also need to exercise more. So we do that domestically, we do that bilaterally and multilaterally. Okay, and then the next question goes to the Denmark's radio. I'm Peter Quist, thank you. I would also like to ask in the theme of def common uh, defense, as I understand you would also like to work, work together when it comes to hybrid uh, warfare, disruptive information, what we should call it. Mm -hmm. um, but some countries work with this in the EU, you have national strategies, uh, it's in NATO. Is there anything special threatening the Nordic countries? Is there anything that uh, it combines these challenges that, uh, that the countries face in this respect? Maybe I can, I can start. Uh, we established here in, in Helsinki the hybrid center and, uh, and all the European Union members can join uh, to this, uh, this uh, center of excellence. Uh, but, uh, but also uh, non-European Union members can, can join in that. There, there is al already 12 countries joining, uh, joining us in this very important field. But if I can answer if there is any common threat, no, well, it's not a common threat, 
But you know, we have all the same types of vulnerabilities. We have the same, same type of societies, which means that working on how cyber warfare and cyber security issue is solved is something you can learn from each other. And of course, uh, we have, um, uh, we find a good, good ways of, of uh, decreasing vulnerability in one country is important to know about from the other countries. Instead of having the same type of, sort of ex expertise in all countries, we can learn and we can divide uh, knowledge between our uh, different countries. And of course, some of these, uh, um, we are all, of course, seeing that there are activities from other countries around the world interested in technology, interested in weaknesses in our system, interested in how political life develops, and uh, the, there's still a secret world out there. And it works in, in the old times before the, the uh, cyberspace existed. They were working on uh, easier to crawl, crawl and, and look at on, in the physical world, but now they are working on the cyber. And then uh, it's good to know from friendly countries how, you, how they can protect themselves and how they look at the patterns, and we have to learn from that. Okay, and then the next question goes to the Swedish radio. Hi, I'm Jens Möller. Uh, this is an English-speaking press conference. I would like Stefan Le Bien to answer in English and Swedish. Please. And Finnish. No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, about uh, what the, the Danish Prime Minister already mentioned, the attack yesterday in New York mm -hmm. and also its possible political implications. Yeah, once again, sorry to say we experienced uh, 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 such a coward attack uh, on, on innocent people. Uh, it looks very similar to the attack that we experienced in Stockholm in April. Um, uh, a man uh, using a vehicle uh, on in killing uh, innocent people. Um, uh, we're appalled because it, it's such a coward act and it's so un uh, hard to understand the evil uh, that can drive people to, to do such a thing. Never the, nevertheless, it happens. And as I said, uh, there's, there are few issues that are more important for a government that protect its people from, from such uh, attacks. So uh, what the implications are that we need to, to uh, domestically, but also bilaterally and multilaterally, increase our efforts in, in preventing this. Uh, so so uh, now we see uh, IS being defeated in the Middle East, but we also hear IS and Al-Qaeda telling their, their uh, people all around the world, now you don't have to come here, perform your attacks in other countries. Do as much damage you can. Kill as many people as you can. Uh, that's the order. So we, we uh, this is the crucial issue for us to protect our people and we'll do our utmost to strengthen our own resources but also to combine our efforts exchanging information and whatever we can so uh, this is the basic issue. Mm. Uh, have we fått se en, en uh, feg attack uh, den uh, attacken som vi nu uh, hörde om igår och följt nyheterna uh, över natten och på morgonen här i New York liknar väldigt mycket den attack som vi upplevde i Stockholm i april. Eh, återigen är vi både förfärade och förvånade över den ondska, hur en, hur en människa kan ta ett fordon och använda för att döda oskyldiga medmänniskor är, är ju naturligtvis fullständigt ofattbart. Icke desto mindre så händer det. Och en regerings eh, primära uppgift är, det är att skydda sin befolkning från den här typen av händelser. Så att här har vi eh, naturligtvis ytterligare slutsatser att dra om hur vi inrikespolitiskt men också bilateralt och multilateralt ska göra allt för att stärka, eh, stärka våra möjligheter att förhindra detta. Eh, och eh, sist och slutligen så är ändå världssamfundet kommer att vara starkare än terrorismen. Vi kommer alla kunna garantera att det inte händer, men vi ska göra allt naturligtvis för att skydda befolkningen från den här typen av händelser. Okej. Okay. Does anyone want to come in this or shall we take the last question? The last. And that goes to MTV3 News. Okej. Okay. 
As you all said here, you were discussing North Korea and other countries also. So what about the UN nuclear weapons ban? Were you discussion, discussing that and you have a different views on this? Finland hasn't signed it and so on. And could I get the answers in Finnish and Swedish, please? Swedish and Finnish. Yes, you started in Finnish. I started in Finnish. And no, um, uh, we didn't uh, discuss it at the meeting explicitly, but of course we've, uh, we have discussed it in, in, in other forms. And I can only in speak... In Swedish. In Swedish? Yes. Not English. Okay. Ja, vi har inte då eh, explicit diskuterat den här ärendet just i det mötet, men vi har i andra eh, tillfällen naturligtvis diskuterat den här frågan. Och jag kan bara svara för Sverige. Eh, vi, när den här konventionen då har diskuterats i, i Förenigade nationerna och den gick till en omröstning nog snabbare än vad eh, de flesta hade förutsett, så valde vi att rösta ja, men också med en tydlig röstförklaring. Att det här innebär att eh, ja-rösten måste följas upp med en, en rejäl eh, utredning analys för vår del. Vad innebär det exempelvis i förhållande till icke-spridningsavtalet eh, och i förhållande till våra internationella samarbeten, inte minst militära samarbeten som vi har. Den utredningen ska påbörjas. Vi räknar med att den eh, avklarar i slutet av nästa år. Det tar det mycket komplexa frågor detta. Allmänt sett om kärnvapen tror jag alla ser nu att det som händer i Nordkorea och händer i andra länder också. Problemet är att vi har, vi har å ena sidan, det är positivt, vi har färre kärnstridsspetsar nu i världen. Kanske minst en från 70-80 000 till någonstans mellan 15-20 000. Men vi har fler länder å andra sidan som har kärnstridsspetsar. Och det vi nu upplever i, i Nordkorea måste ändå vara, jag menar, det är uppenbart här att... Det som hände i Hiroshima och Nagasaki aldrig får hända igen. Det får aldrig hända igen. Och då är menar jag, världssamfundets uppgift att se till att, att också på sikt vi måste få bort kärnvapnen ifrån vårt jordklot. Därför att, och där har vi då konventioner, regler vad gäller biologiska vapen, kemiska vapen, men det finns inte just på kärnvapenområdet. Nu måste vi ändå hantera detta på det mest pragmatiska sättet, därför att det är resultatet slutligen som är det viktiga, att kärnvapen en dag inte längre finns på vår jord. Det är det viktigaste. Inte exakt vilken väg, vilken form vi tar, men att ha det framför våra ögon, det menar jag är en helt fundamental uppgift. För det här är massförstörelsevapen som, som kan, kan ja, innebära rena katastrofer för, för vårt jordklot och som politiskt ledare så kan vi inte bara stå och se att okej, okay, de finns. Eh, låt oss hoppas att det inte händer. Det, en sån attityd håller inte enligt min uppfattning. No niin, eli minulla on se Suomen, suomeksi vastauksen rooli sitten. Eli kaikki, kaikki olemme asiasta samaa mieltä, että, että toivomme sen päivän tulevan, että ydin aseita ei maailmassa enää ole. Tässä on kaksi, kaksi leiriä. Toiset ovat ydin sulkusopimuksen kannalla ja toiset ydin kieltosopimuksen kannalla. Suomi on äh, valinnut tämän ydin äh, sulkusopimuksen äh, tien, jossa, jossa lähdemme siitä, että äh, toisaalta olemme monien, monien muiden maiden ka, äh, kanssa sitoutuneet ydinaseettomuuteen tämän sopimuksen kautta ja aseista riisunnan kautta sitten toivomme, että pääsemme tähän yhteiseen lopputulokseen, jonka Stefan Löven tuossa mainitsi. Sama, sama tavoite vähän eri keinoilla. Tästä, tästä emme keskustele tänä, tänä, tämän aamupäivän aikana vielä. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much everyone and I will leave the